Hey guys, uh, last video here, we are going to go over how to run the weighted sum and the weighted overlay tool. They both do the same thing, but how you input the data is a little different um, and varies from the sum to the overlay tool. So I just want to quick run through both with you. Um, so in order to do this final um, suitability surface, we need to make sure that we all have our reclassified layers completed. So if you don't have those completed or you don't know how to run the reclassify tool, please watch the previous video that goes more into using the, the Euclidean distance and reclassify geoprocessing tools before watching this one. But essentially, we need our reclassified layers run and ready to go so that we can go into our geoprocessing search bar and search for weighted overlay or weighted sum. So I will drag this one in here just so you guys can see the difference when we connect these. So if we start with the weighted sum, I already have this one run, so I'm not going to rerun it. Um, I'll just show you how to go step by step in this. So say we haven't run this, so say this isn't connected and it looks essentially like our weighted overlay. Uh, we're just going to click and drag and all of these are going to be input rasters, input raster, input raster, etc. For all of our reclassified layers that are critical or important to our final suitability surface. So once we have all those connected to our weighted sum, we're going to open the table. Um, and you can see that it has connected all of our important and critical layers. So the difference with the weighted sum uh, you'll see that there's a numerical weight given. And since we have six layers, we can weight them uh, from one to six, six being most important and one being the least important. Uh, you can have multiple threes, so we could have six, five, four, three, three, and one, or however you want to do it. Um, it's just putting weights to your most important and least important layers. So. Again, you can go one through six, or you can go two through six and have two twos or two threes or what have you. And then again, your output raster is just what you're going to label it so you know that that is um, the final suitability surface. So you'll press OK, and you'll right click and run, and then it will spit out our final suitability surface. Okay, so that's the weighted sum. That's what the table looks like when you open uh, the parameters, and that's how you go about setting that up and running the tool. Um, for the weighted overlay, if we go in and connect these, you notice it's not an input raster, but you insert it into the weighted overlay table. So for all of these, we are going to input into our weighted overlay table. Okay, we have that. We will open our tool, and the difference between the weighted overlay now that you can see um, versus the weighted sum is that we are weighting based on the scale of 100%. So right now you can see that it has just weighted the first layer we've connected at 100% and the rest are zeros. Obviously that's not um, how we are wanting to run our suitability because we have other layers that need to be considered to make our final suitability surface. So if this is our critical habitat, we may want to make that one more important than the other, so weight it more heavily. So let's weigh that at 55%. And then our wildlife management areas, we can label maybe 20. Our wildlife refuges, maybe 15. And so it'll pop up with a red X um, if it doesn't equal 100. And then you go hover over it, weights must equal 100. So then you know right away. And you don't need to worry about mental math or anything. GIS will automatically add for you. So right now we're at 90%. So if this is if my wind turbines are the last layer, of course we need to weigh this at 10%. And then for your scale, I would just do it to the max of 1 to 100. Um, no particular reason, but I think it gives you a more uh, concise 
output on your suitability surface so that's why I would recommend that and then again just label your output raster press OK um, and then you'll right click I'm gonna right click and run and then that'll spit up that output raster again I already ran the weighted sum so I will just show you in the map view what that looks like so if we go back to our map this is our final suitability surface so um, if we go over to our symbology you can see that oops, I'm on the wrong layer the gray we've extracted and so the gray locations are actually our highest suitable locations and then from the dark green you can see on the right hand side is the most suitable all the way down to like this pink and then eventually a white so you can see way down here in this um, southwest corner is obviously the most unsuitable and if we turn back on our trail uh, you can see where that intersects so this one is probably outside of our boundary that we have set because if we have a 10 mile boundary that's only going to about right here following this line so this is out of out of reach for what our goals are for our buffer that we had set up but again it depends on your own buffer so keep that in mind while you're going through these things um, but when you first get your final suitability service in here um, go directly to your symbology tab because the default is a stretch so you want to automatically and immediately change that to classify so it's going to assign a color for each group of values so click that uh, change your method to natural breaks if it doesn't do it automatically and then scroll down and change your classes to the highest number of classes again it's going to give you a more concise um, value and region for your suitable services so ultimately that's how the tool works um, I hope this is useful for you guys um, again it's very straightforward so you can use either the weighted sum tool or the weighted overlay um, both will work the same so whichever it's just user preference and how you want to rank your important and critical layers so I hope this helps uh, let me know if you guys have questions. Thanks.